Well, good evening. It's really an honor to be here with you virtually tonight as you embark on your state meetings and prepare for your Capitol Hill WebEx meetings with your members of Congress and their staffs, which will take place over the next three days of forum. I need you to know that just because your Hill meetings will not be in person does not mean that they are any less important than they have been in past years. Your being advocates on Capitol Hill every year during the forum is one of the most critical ingredients in making the substance use prevention field both influential and powerful. Your Capitol Hill meetings have always been how we cultivate new members of Congress to be our champions and cultivate champions you have. In fact, all of our most ardent, longtime and powerful champions were cultivated, strengthened and sustained by your past Capitol Hill meetings. We are seeing unprecedented turnover in Congress. 2020 was the eighth congressional session in a row to produce more than 50 new House members, 60% of whom have never held elective office before. That means that many of the members and staff you meet with this week will know absolutely nothing about the issues, programs, and funding we all need to be able to continue our great work. That's why building meaningful relationships with both new and returning members of Congress and their staffs over the next three days has never been more critical. Your meetings every year are crucial to our success in maintaining and increasing funding for substance use prevention. They ensure members and their staffs know there is a large grassroots constituency for substance use prevention generally and prevention coalitions specifically who are working diligently and making a real difference in their communities. Because of your meetings as constituents, your members will know to look out for and care about the programs that fund your work. You are part of a very resilient substance use prevention field who have always been willing to stand up, speak up and show up to ensure our field is seen and heard on Capitol Hill. And I can attest to the fact that you have been heard. Just listen to the major accomplishments we achieved last year. The final COVID package passed into law in late December included an additional 1.65 billion with the B dollars for addiction related issues using the substance abuse prevention and treatment block grant as the mechanism for delivering the funds. The law also includes explicit language to ensure that SAMHSA maintains the 20% set aside for prevention. This means that an additional $330 million will be available through your single state agencies for substance use prevention related to COVID-19. In addition, we were able to save the proposed cut in the president's budget that would have zeroed out the Strategic Prevention Framework Partnership for Success Grants in the Center for Substance Abuse Prevention. We got the entire $109 million totally restored. The CARA Enhancement Grant Program that funds current and former drug-free communities grantees to do more with more intensity around opioid and stimulant issues was plussed up by a million dollars. So it is now fully funded at a it's authorized level of $5 million. Never underestimate how influential you are or question if your Hill meetings have an impact. They absolutely do. This week is your time to advocate once again to ensure that our field survives and thrives. Everything you need for your Hill meetings is in a virtual booklet. This booklet is available on the CATCA forum platform. To access it, click on Capitol Hill Day from the lobby and then click on View the Capitol Hill Booklet. The booklet includes materials on our legislative priorities for fiscal year 2022. These priorities include funding the Drug-Free Communities Program at the highest possible level, funding the STOP Act and its Coalition Enhancement Grant Program for current and former Drug-Free Communities grantees at the highest possible level, funding the CARA Coalition Enhancement Grant Program at the highest possible level. It includes information on the Substance Abuse Prevention and Treatment Block Grant and the vital importance of the 20% required prevention set aside. It also includes an ask that 
new legislation be passed to ban all flavors, including menthol, in all cigarettes, as well as in all nicotine and marijuana vaping products. The booklet has a list of all the programs and agencies that fund our entire field for prevention, intervention, treatment, recovery, support, and research and includes an ask that they all be funded at the highest possible levels in fiscal year 2022. If you're wondering why our asks are so focused on funding, the answer is the following quote from Congressman Hal Rogers from Kentucky. Policy and legislation without appropriations are a hallucination, but don't worry that you'll be missing a chance to weigh in on other critically important pieces of legislation because in addition to tracking and advocating for appropriations all year long, CATCA will also be tracking, weighing in on, and using our legislative alerts to mobilize you to ensure you're able to respond to every piece of legislation that affects our field in any way. So this week, we need to make the case loud and clear that the core set of federal programs that fund our field all need to be funded at the highest possible levels, and that we need more resources devoted to substance use prevention to stop or delay first use. You are America's quiet heroes. You keep pushing to change and improve the conditions in your communities, regardless of major obstacles such as COVID-19. You bring people together to solve problems that really matter, and you actually fix them. You have the proof that what you do in your communities works. You have outcomes and successes that you will share in your Capitol Hill meetings throughout this week. What you do matters. It makes a real difference. Your work, your stories, and your outcomes are all totally compelling. You stand up for youth. You stand up for limiting access and availability of all substances to youth. You stand up for more and better social supports, programs, and services in your communities. You stand up for changing or working not to change policies, practices, and laws that undermine our youth's ability to succeed, thrive, and reach their true potentials. You also stand up for ensuring that prevention gets its fair share of funding. In the face of terrible isolation, loss, and deaths from COVID-19, you have continued to do your great work. Tell the stories about how you have done this. Share your amazing population level outcomes in reducing levels of youth substance use that have been achieved with literally tiny amounts of federal funding. The fact is you make stone soup out of very scarce resources this point really needs to be part of the story you tell in your meetings this week. You are the repairers of your communities. Your knowledge, passion, and hard work have spoken and will continue to speak volumes to those in power. They will hear you and heed your requests. You are the ones who make sure all the voices in your community, especially youth voices, are heard by those in power. We are unified in our purpose to make sure substance use prevention remains a priority because with effective prevention, we can turn off the faucet to addiction, overdoses and deaths and not just clean up the flood. It's on all of us to keep congressional members and staff informed about the most pressing substance use issues affecting your communities. It's on all of us to work with our local elected officials to advance legislation that strengthens and expands substance use prevention in this new Congress. It's really all about relationships, starting them, building them, maintaining them. That's the key to everything in public policy and advocacy. In closing, I want to share a quote from Harriet Tubman. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. I know you are all up for the challenge. Good luck with your Capitol Hill meetings. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for being Katka's amazing ambassadors 
and advocates on Capitol Hill.